Well, hello, Grace Fellowship Youth. So glad that um, I could join you today. I'm so glad Pastor Yol gave me the opportunity to um, to get back on here and, and be with you. We sure have missed you. We've missed being with you in person. Um, and I'm sure you've all heard of what we are going through right now, what we are dealing with in our family. And we, um, we can't thank you all enough for your prayers and all that you've done. So um, I just kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today and excuse my voice. I've not had a voice in a couple of weeks. Um, but um, first of all, what I'm going through right now, um, I've been been kind of um, telling people it, it's a fire. We're walking through the fire. And you know, fires are dangerous. Fires are destructive. And fires are not any fun when you're in them, right? Um, but the Bible talks about a refiner's, refiner's fire, and that's in Malachi. And this type of fire has a purpose. And um, we know that in Romans that we have the promise that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So, um, I don't know if you're struggling with anything like I am right now. Um, if you are got a situation that you're walking through and, and may be overwhelmed, um, you may feel lost. You, um, you may be saying, Lord, what in the world is going on in my situation? What are you doing? What do you want to do in my life? Um, so I just want to talk to you a little bit about that and, and some things that the Lord has been showing me about my own self. Um, so um, first of all, last February, on February the 8th, I was standing in my living room and I was um, up writing on the board and I was writing some history dates up for my kids and audibly I heard the Lord say, Sarah, stop teaching your kids history. Stop focusing on academics and get them in the Word. And so I did that. I got my kids in the Word and that's something I was guilty of, was not memorizing, not having them memorize the Word like they should. And um, growing up, I was, um, was blessed to have a wonderful pastor and pastor's wife and I actually got to spend some time with her this past week which was absolutely such a blessing to me but um, the big thing that they did was they taught us songs and it was all songs that were taken straight from the Word of God so during this time that um, I feel like I've been walking through the fire what has come up in my spirit what I wake up in the middle of the night singing is these songs that are just nothing but the word and so I felt like that's what the Lord was saying to me was get your kids in the word because they're gonna need it and I got to be honest I, I missed it because I felt like the reason the Lord was preparing me for that was because of what was going on politically, what was getting ready to happen politically. And, um, you know, I, I just knew that my kids were going to be standing um, on the Word of God when the rest of the world may look like it was just falling down amongst us. So that's at first what I thought, uh, okay, Lord, you're preparing me and my kids for what we're going to walk through um, in this political political thing that we're getting ready to walk to in, through in November and we were going through the um, coronavirus at that time so little did I know um, we you know we walked through that and and I kept them in the word and you know there was a there was just a hunger that the Lord placed inside of me and I think it all started when we started doing the online videos um, to dig deeper and you know it just stirred my spirit to find out more that there was so much more that I was missing out on so much more that I felt like the church and I'm not talking about Grace Fellowship I'm talking about the church of believers the body of Christ was missing out on that we were not walking in our full authority so um, February of this past year so almost a year and a week to the day, I had a very close friend who was diagnosed um, with cancer and it shattered me. 
Um, I remember my sister calling that morning um, after I had gotten that news that ne that next or the next the day after, and I remember she said, "Hi, how are you?" And I couldn't even speak. I couldn't even get the words to come out. And I said, "I'm struggling today." And she said, "What's going on?" And and I told her what had happened, and I told her um, the diagnosis that my friend had received, and I said something you know something's got to give this this is not of god and um so we um we stood with this friend we actually loaded her up and and took her to a church in nashville that has been seeing uh, miraculous healings in the, in their church and you know sometimes you just got to get in the atmosphere and um so we took her to that atmosphere and um you know i just i want to praise god for what he's doing in her life and he gave me a a vision um, two weeks ago of her and she was walking through this wading pool and all around her was fire but the path in front of her was a wading pool and she was just walking as calmly the fire couldn't touch her because she was walking through this water and that's how she's been through these treatments she has walked and she has stood on the promises of God even when the when the doctors may have told her reports that she didn't want to hear, she stood on it. We stood on it with her. Air spirits were stirred. And um, so, you know, we've been, we've been fighting that battle with her and um, since February. And um, my mom had hip replacement in March, March the 24th. And it seemed like um, after that, my mom just could never get better from the hip replacement. And so we, um, my dad took her to the ER one day and um, I went over when I got off of work and relieved him. She had been there for quite a few hours. I said, dad, you go on home. Um, you know, I'll sit with her and, and the ER doctor had actually even come in and, and had told them that her blood work looked fairly normal and he thought that it was probably just some type of, um, like infection or, or some type of virus, uh, a colon inflammation or something that was causing issues. So he left us feeling comfortable that, you know, everything was going to be fine. And the doctor walks in shortly after my dad left. And he looked at my mom and, or she looked at my mom and she said, I know that um, you wouldn't have come in here today had you not been having problems that, um, you know, pain that you were having. And she shut the door. So I immediately knew. I've been in the medical field too long. I immediately knew I was getting ready to probably hear words that I didn't want to hear. So she proceeded to tell my mom um, that she had um, can pancreatic cancer and that it had already metastasized to several organs and the peace of God was something that I've never felt in my entire life and um, the Holy Spirit was in that room that day and she started to tell us you know the statistics and I looked at her and I said We'll be fine. We serve a big God. And she looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and she said, um, when, when we were leaving, she said, you know, I wish you all the luck. You know, they've, they've come a long way in the last few years with pancreatic cancer. Um, and I, I, I wish you all the luck. And um, so um, that's where the fire is that we're walking right now. Um, I, like a lot of you all, your mothers are your best friends. Your mother is the one that you turn to um, no matter what's going on in your life. She's the first person I call every morning. She's the last person I call in the evenings. And um, so it's been difficult and it's been a fire that we are walking through. So, um, I love the story. One of my favorite stories is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the fire. And not only was that just a miraculous story because there was a fourth man right there with them in the fire, but they walked out of that fire not even smelling like smoke. Now, I don't know about you all, but one of the reasons I don't care for a campfire is because of the smell of smoke. 
it gets in your hair and I always have to take a shower after I've sat around a campfire because I don't want to smell like that smoke. But these three men came out of that fire after being in that furnace, didn't have the first scent of fire on them. So, um, another thing that I've been thinking about with fires is um, forest fires. You know, not all fires are bad. And um, forest fires are started on purpose. They are started for a reason. And they use these fires to clear out weeds in order um, to give the trees more natural resources, more life. Um, they, they clear out all the weeds so that the trees can get more sunlight and more water and more life to them. So the fire burns, what it does is in a forest fire or a controlled burn, it burns away all of that dead stuff, all of the stuff that um, is, keep, is hindering you from receiving true life. And it, what does it leave? It leaves nutrient-rich soil. It does, may not look pretty for a while, but that soil is so rich and so, nu so nutritious and it's, it's just ready to, to, for new growth. Now, um, so the refiner's fire that I feel like um, the Lord is doing in my life right now, the refiner's fire was first mentioned in Malachi, and Malachi was a prophet. And so um, a refiner's fire is a fire that melts down gold or silver, um, it heats it to a very high temperature, and it melts it down as a purification process, okay? So in Malachi, um, God spoke through Malachi the prophet, and he was describing how he was going to purify the Israelites, okay? How he was going to purify their hearts. Um, but you see, a refiner's fire doesn't destroy the metal. It, what it does is, it allows that junk to rise up to the top and that they, you can gather it at that point. You can grab it out from the top and th toss it off to the side, get rid of the junk. And it makes it more valuable. And isn't that just like Jesus? Isn't that just like Jesus? He takes a mess, he takes a fire that we are walking through and he uses it to redeem us with his love. He uses it to make us more like him. Um, Psalm 66, actually, I may skip that, Psalm 66, I didn't realize I had talked so long, and I'm sorry, just bear with me, um, Psalms 48, 10, I want to read to you, it says, Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver, I have tested you in the furnace of, of affliction, so really, what the Lord has been showing me is, um, you know, I just feel like he's saying, don't you see, Sarah? Don't you see? Don't you see that I'm doing something? Not only am I creating a testimony for your family, for your mother, but I'm doing something in you. Um, he is burning, my prayer has been, burn me out of me, God. Burn me out of me. I don't want anything left of me in me. So that when I'm through this fire, all that's left is him because there's nothing good in me. It's, you know, I mean, every in, anything that is good in me comes from him. So that's my prayer. Um, and, you know, sometimes a refiner's fire um, clears away good things. Good things that aren't God things. Okay. Um, my life has not been a sin. I haven't been living a sinful life. Um, but yet it wasn't, I, I was not living to my full potential. I was not digging deep into this word like I should. I didn't know how to fight the devil head on until he attacked my family and my friend. Um, I didn't know how to cast out demons until I walked through this fire, until I got in the situation where there was no other option but to either dig deep and do what the word tells me to do or succumb to the devil. And I will stand right here and tell you I by no means intend to succumb to the devil. So, um, 
like I said, the refiner's fire clears away good things sometimes, but not good things that aren't God things. Um, so, you know, that's what I feel like the Lord is doing in my life as I'm walking through this fire. And it's okay because sometimes, you know, something I've, I've learned is how to be intimate with Jesus during this time. I've never been so intimate with him um, in my whole life telling him how I really feel right now. I mean, you don't know how many mornings I wake up and I say, Lord, how much longer? How much longer until we see this healing? How much longer do we have to fight this enemy? And um, so I've learned to be intimate with him and it's okay to be intimate with him. He wants us to be intimate with him. He wants us to um, express our, our feelings and our emotions to him. Um, just like I think about my relationship with my husband, when Travis and I are going through something, I want him to tell me exactly what he's feeling. I don't want him hiding anything from me. So I've learned that that's okay. I don't have to just pray prayers that um, I feel like I need to pray, that it's the thing to say. I actually feel now that I have an intimate relationship with Jesus, that I can just share with him anything that I want to, even if it's, God, I'm angry right now. I'm angry. Why haven't you come through yet? So a fire might be temporary. What you're walking through is temporary. Um, a forest fire, it's temporary, and it's painful at the time for the forest, right? Um, but what remains is stronger and the new growth is so rich and so lush. And I wanna read one more scripture for you. First Peter 1, 7. First Peter 1, 7. In this, well, actually I'm gonna start with verse six. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, God, take me through the fire. And if you're in a fire right now, I just, um, I'm, I'm praying for you. Please don't feel like I'm ever too busy um, to pray for you. Shoot me a text and let me know. Um, but if you're walking through something right now that you feel is a fire, don't think of it as it's the end. Think of it as that God is doing something in your life. He is burning out all the, the bad stuff, the stuff that is not of Him. And it's gonna be, you, what's coming up in your life is going to be rich and luscious. And, um, you know, I know that I'm not there yet. But um, I pray that when I finish walking through this, that I am. And that's my prayer. And um, so, like I said, I'm sorry to keep you so long tonight. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what, um, what's been going on and what the Lord is doing in our lives. And, and we miss you. We miss being with you um, on Sunday mornings. And we promise we will be back soon. And hopefully we'll be um, anointed more than ever. Um, to share the gospel and, and to um, fight battles with you and for you. So I just want to pray for you right now and, and just bless you, okay? Father, we come to you and we thank you that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that we can run into it and we are safe, Father. Thank you that your word says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father, I don't know what each one of these children are going through, but Father, I thank you that you are walking right beside them. Every step of the way, Father, that you are walking beside them, whether it be a fire or just a small little valley. Father, I thank you that they will come out of this not smelling like smoke. Father, I ask you just to do a work in all of us. Just, um, we want to be that remnant believer when you come back to get us. We want to be that bride that is ready for you, that church that is just purified so that all you see is righteousness. Father, I thank you for these kids. Just ask you to place a hedge of protection around them, Father. 
no evil will befall them, nor shall any plague come near thy dwelling, because they have made you their refuge. We love you, Father. We thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, guys. I love you. It's so good to be back with you.